This is the emergency evacuation announcements which I'll now read and it starts with please note that this meeting will be audio recorded. Um, should we be required to evacuate the building would you please leave the room by the door to the fire escape staircase. Please hold both handrails in case the stairs are wet or slippery. This is new. If anyone is unable to use the stairs, would they please allow others to exit the room before they go to the fire escape door where they can then be given assistance. Our fire assembly point will be in the public car park at the side of the civic suite. Please do not delay your evacuation to collect any belongings. Please do not return to the building until given permission to do so by council staff. Then move on to um, apologies for absence. There are none. Everyone is here. Non members attending, um, Councillor Simon Smith. Yes. Minutes of the meeting held on 25th November 2014. Can I sign these minutes? Can I read? Yes. So you were here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I say we, I mean we. I'll make it the 27th. It's just a two of us, wasn't it? Mm. Cozy. Otherwise, we're all in the wrong place. Pass those two. What's that? To receive declarations of interest? None. That's good. So we now move on to the. Um, <coughs> Treasury Management Strategy Statement, Annually Investment Strategy and Minimum Revenue Provision Policy Statement 2015-16. And we are considering the head of the um, report of the Head of Finance on the Council's Treasury Strategy for Borrowing Investments. Um, I'll start by asking if Councillor Smith wants to say anything before <coughs> we move to members asking questions. Um, the statement that you see is pretty much in line with what we've done for a good number of years and the, the, the principles that we do within it have served us quite well um, but clearly circumstances change, figures change, projections change and so on um, and you, you, you see the, the various um, estimates through through the report um, we've not had I've not had any significant concerns and in reality I think that the quality of performance that our, our management uh, has, has given us has been something um, to be reasonably proud about there have been a number of um, issues nationally, internationally, uh, across the years with banks, countries, um, and all, all, all sorts of things happening. They haven't really hit us uh, at all. Um, we've, we've taken a sidestep recently with our, our banking because the co-op has started to go into trouble and we've managed to get out without any, any issues to, to Lloyd's. Um, and of course, the one thing that we are particularly proud of is that we have no borrowing at all. Uh, and we're, we're, we're still in this position despite uh, being fairly active as a council um, uh, uh, over the years. Um, and investments, <coughs> investments ha, 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 have been uh, made in, in capital and and so on so that's just a, a very a very brief outline of um, how, how I'm seeing it thank you um, I will now see if anyone has any questions if I um, stop <coughs> okay left and then I'll go that one um, Sorry, uh, to my right. Uh, Chairman, I, I, if you don't mind, I should just say that obviously before I took over, the, the portfolio and the management was managed equally well by one of your fellow. Yes. <laughs> Three. Perhaps an interest should have been declared. Yes. <laughs> we recorded, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, Councillor Seekers, um, the stage was Yes, I, I concur with many of those comments. 
Um, I think that sort of due uh, praise should also be given to certain football fans who kept us out of the <coughs> fiasco in the uh, Icelandic uh, banking crisis, um, principally by sort of reading the back pages, I believe. But, uh, um, that was one of the things which I, I seem to recall and uh, um, perhaps shared a little bit of that uh, credit, but uh, I think most must go to our finance team. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose in terms of uh, the generalities of uh, borrowing, um, that was something which um, I think is possibly under consideration to actually finance potential revenue streams from asset purchases or developments of some sort. But um, uh, is that very much within uh, the portfolio holders' thinking? <coughs> well, we. We've got a, a need for financing. It's in uh, 3.2, page 3, I think it is, <coughs> where we've got some, some projections for, for, for some financing. Um, we do, because of all the different finance streams that, that we handle, have, have reasonable cash flows. And we've been able to do some internal borrowing essentially up to now but you're right while interest rates are are low um, borrowing money isn't desperately expensive um, so there is a an argument that if you borrow while the money's cheap even if you might not immediately need it it could still make good financial sense <coughs> the estimates going forward though are suggesting that borrowing could perhaps remain at, at lower levels um, and then the other thing that we've, we've we've got is options as to how we borrow we've got the public work lo loans board but we've also been um, investigating in what's it called the, the municipal, municipal bonds agency which is, it's not it's not set up yet but there's there's potentially an alternative there as well so borrowing is not written out um, at, at this moment in time and clear and potentially there is a need there is a, a need into the future but <coughs> whether that is external borrowing or not um, it's not been determined yet, but I, I think uh, the, the 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 lead officer uh, Yvonne Woodward has sort of been dropping hints to members that you know that that question needs to come up for discussion. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the downside of the Public Works Loan Board is that uh, although you can lock in um, some relatively low rates uh, currently for quite a considerable period, if if, if required. Um, I believe it has to be used virtually, uh, well, not necessarily immediately, but in the very short term, it has to be actually for a project. Whereas mm -hmm. we went the, um, the sort of uh, um, bonds uh, financing route, um, it wouldn't necessarily be tied in or tied down in such a, a, a way. Was that a question you want to answer? It? Or was it a statement? Well, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. you're, you're it's waiting part, for a partly a statement, partly question. Yeah. But I think it really is. A, is, is probably, uh, judging by the nods I was getting, yeah. that, uh, yeah. I think I was probably right. Yes, with my statement. For the tape, there was nods. Um, could you just confirm with the public works board? Is can you confirm that those loans, the you cannot well you can repay them early, but the interest will be charged in full, or is that not the, that loan? I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know the answer. I'll find out. Okay. Because of my time here, we've never borrowed. So. Yes, I've <laughs> never I never experienced it. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, um, so Councillor. No. Oh, you've you still got some more questions. No, 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 yeah, I, I just want to stay on this uh, particular issue because I've highlighted 3.2 as well, where the CFR 
does in, infer that there's a borrowing requirement. I want to ask a number of questions, and it's about the practicalities and the timing of things. And then I want to ask other questions about capital receipts. In particular, <clears throat> I want to ask, well, we have this report, and we're carrying forward a borrowing requirement, which is actually quite soon. So in terms of the rules, <coughs> is it entirely acceptable for us to report this position and yet have taken no definitive action. So I guess my question is going to be, what action would need to be taken to fulfil a borrowing to meet this CFR deficit? When would it need to be taken? How would it need to be taken? And who needs to be involved? And then I'll talk about other issues. Well, the you mentioned Table 3.2, the, the 1,806,000 is for the waste vehicles that are being procured. Now, the, the procurement process has started. It's my understanding that we pay for those vehicles in May, so in the 2015-16 financial year, hence it's in the 2015-16 column. Um, in terms of how quickly we can take out a loan if, if we go down that route from the PWLB, let's say. Um, my understanding is that's a, that's a fairly quick process. I, I believe it, it can be done in a matter of days. Um, I don't think it, it's literally a form-filling exercise that is passed on to the t PWLB and it's <coughs> turned around pretty quick. I have to confirm that, but that, that's my understanding of it. Okay, thanks for that, but of course that doesn't answer the whole of my question um, because I asked about how and who. You've told me about when yep. and you've given me <coughs> comfort yep. about how that can be organised. But what process do we need to go through in council or is council not involved at all and is it purely a portfolio holder's decision? Again, my understanding is that it would be um, a recommendation from the head of finance at that time. Now, obviously, Yvonne um, won't be with us in May. Right. Mm -hmm. So that will be the Section 151 officer Correct. who will be in place. Um, and in terms of whether it comes before full council or portfolio holder, I would think it's portfolio holder. The, well, the, the spending decision's already been made on the waste vehicles to allow the, yeah. the, uh, the item to be, the order to be placed and so on. But each, each subsequent year, those spending figures are there based on our five-year um, spending plan. But the spending plan comes to council each year with the capital program as well. Um, as <coughs> we'll obviously start, start to look at, you know, you look, well, it's next week, isn't it? Where you start to look at the budget and that'll have the capital program attached to that. So ultimately it is a council decision. So, okay, getting it right in my mind and for these minutes, then um, we're expecting council to confirm that a borrowing should be made externally to meet this CFR. So that's our anticipation. Um, I think the, the borrow, well, the route of borrowing is undecided. I mean, Yvonne on Saturday at the Members Away Day intimated that the 1.8 million would hopefully be internally borrowed mm -hmm. but there's no guarantee of that um, she intimated that the future years 16 17 17 18 would probably be when we need to externally borrow um, but the agreement of this report would be agreeing that a form of borrowing would need to take place I agree with what you say chairman <coughs> yes but I think it would be remiss of this uh, review committee not to anticipate what the future uh, may hold in terms of individual particle decisions. Because if we don't, and we miss something by not asking questions, we will be held reasonably accountable by the public <coughs> for not having done so and anticipated what should happen next. So I'm, I'm comfortable if the process, based on my questions, is, is minuted, which shows that the review committee were aware of the circumstances we were entering into and how the council's balanced budget would be fulfilled, particularly around the capital receipts. 
So it's a case, this is a case of, of being careful and assured, which is, of course, the responsibility of all scrutiny committees. I think clearly the, the, the borrowing requirement is, is, is part, uh, the, the spending requirement is part of the, the greater budget, which is balanced and how we'll make the payments that we can afford it and so on. Um, <clears throat> within the, the way things operate, when that uh, payment comes due to be made, the anticipation is that we'll be able to find that capital receipt internally to, to, to do the borrowing. If there is the need to externally borrow um, a proportion of it or, or whatever, um, I couldn't tell you exactly now what, what the precise procedure is, but we can we can furnish you with with, with that procedure. But, okay. but it, I I don't believe that decision to borrow or not to borrow will come to council. It's the principle of the spending that's the result of. Yes, I I, yeah. I acknowledge that. But um, yes, for the for the purpose of the minutes and advising <coughs> this committee, I think it would be helpful to have the procedure set out so that um, it's known beforehand, particularly with you know a considerable amount of change um, going on in the council, and in particular around the 151 officer particularly. I think it would be useful guide <coughs> for a 151 officer coming on an injury room to know that the council has actually thought about it and set it down. There's too many other things to think about. So I acknowledge everything you say. I acknowledge that um, you know there is a plan, uh, there is an acknowledgement, there is an expectation, but that's a final expectation in the event that we came to a position where we we weren't able to for something mm -hmm. that had happened that we don't honestly know about. Finance is notorious for spinning things upon us that we're not expecting, and I think council seekers would agree that is something of prudency that uh, <coughs> the public mm -hmm. first should think about. Uh, so I've done that. Uh, uh, and of course, as we, as we move forward, there are potential capital receipts from decisions that have or haven't been made, which can obviously influence that. Well, I'm glad you said that, because that's where I was going next. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you anticipated uh, what I was going to say next. There, is, there, is, uh, there are references in the report um, to capital receipts and whether or not asset sales will, will uh, t turn out um, to be so or in the amount required. To what extent, um, well, what assets are there? What, are, what assets are we selling? And what's the present view on whether they will yield a capital receipt in this time scale? I don't know that definitive decisions about our assets have been made. As you're aware, there are um, talks and discussions about um, the 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 yard, you know, you know depot. what I mean, the depot, um, as to, to what what's happening there. We've got another um, another another number of properties that we're looking at the viability of. We're looking at the use of them. Um, we're not looking to strip assets or, or anything like. That. It's part of our, our normal management of of the resources that we've got, making sure that they are efficiently used. If <coughs> if we're not using them, are there other agencies that use them? Is it best to dispose of them? What's the viability? You know, where we've got old properties, the whole lot is is, is constantly reviewed, not on a, a weekly or monthly basis, a, a, a periodic basis. Um, but there are no, there are not, there's not a whole line of definitive sell-offs that are in the pipeline, and there's a lot of decisions and processes to go through before things like that happen. As they say, when, when I was in finance, nothing's booked. No. Okay, that's, that's fine for me. Again, a question, if we don't ask, presented with the position in front of us, we will, we will have missed the opportunity <coughs> to ask, but also to, to ask the extent of planning uh, for it. Because when there's a statement that says, it may or may not happen, you're bound to ask, well, what may or may not happen? Mm -hmm. So we know now. I'll stop at this point. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have to say that um, I found the report uh, quite con com uh, comprehensive uh, and involved and Councillor Mason has raised a number of points that I wanted to raise, so thank you for doing that. Um, it's a pleasure. I was interested, uh, as I mentioned earlier on Saturday, um, Yvonne mentioned the 
uh, the possibility for us loan, uh, lending from ourselves, which I found quite an interesting concept. But as with all the uh, loans, the interest rates, everybody say the interest rates are going to go up in future years, so if we are going to have to borrow money, the best thing to do, I think, is earlier rather than later. Um, and also, I don't know, there's going to be a new Section 151 officer, and they may take a different view on everything as well. So there's perhaps something else we need to consider um, uh, for the future. But overall, I thought the report very comprehensive. Um, I was pleased to note that obviously we use capita um, to uh, which we use a certain financial information on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes. But we don't take their their uh, advice um, without thinking about it ourselves, which I think is a good positive thing as well. And that was mm. good to see in the report as well. That's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, can I just ask about benchmarking? Yes. Um, obviously, we use capita to, or we use their advice um, about investments, um, and we pay the minimum amount for the, for that. I was looking for details about benchmarking for similar councils, but I couldn't see it in the report. I may have missed it. Or it may be called something different. I was wondering if, we, if it's possible to benchmark against other councils, see if our returns are similar to theirs. Yes, this, this was a question that came up at the last yes. task of Fish Group. Yes. Yeah. Um, following that meeting, I emailed all of our, all of my counterparts, <coughs> uh, other authorities, and I do have a set of figures here in front of me tonight. Um, <laughs> it's not a comprehensive table mm. um, of, of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, of the 13 authorities I emailed, sorry, of the 12, 13 including us, um, I've only had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 responses. Okay. I can give you those responses, but I, I didn't want to give you part information. Yeah. Would you like? Um, I can read them out? If you read them out. Okay, well, really? in, in terms of the most, I'll, I'll go with the most recent quarter. Um, our average interest rate return. Uh, it, the one thing to bear in mind is some of these authorities use um, fund managers, mm. whereas we don't. We do all the yes. treasury investments ourselves. Our average interest rate return was 0.68% for quarter three. Um, is it okay to min take this in for other authorities? Is that, I assume it's been the public information? It's, well, what the same as our report, report yeah. the midterm one tells yeah. the interest rate, should they fine. should all be doing the same. Okay. So I'm presuming it's public information. Okay. Castle Point, 0.41%. Chelmsford, 1.4%, but that came with the caveat that they have three long term investments that they put out five years ago that are just maturing, which were at very high rates five, year, five years <coughs> ago. And they admitted that when they mature, they'll be much nearer our figures. Malden, 0.57%. South End on Sea didn't give me quarter three, but the nearest they had was quarter two, 0.48%. And Uttlesford, 0.34%. So you can see from those figures that, that <coughs> we are punching well above everybody, apart from Chelmsford, but obviously with their, their caveat that they've got longer investments so I think for for the small um, portfolio that we have it's it's definitely doing well on the results we have back so far I will be pestering these other authorities that haven't come back and uh, fill you in as soon as they, they, they come back to me thank you very much for that that's good work and, and I don't have any figures in front of me but I can recall similar statistics being given over the past years as well no, I had concerns about whether we were maybe over-cautious, but it might suggest to me that we're probably about right in our strategy. I mean, it, it's, it's one of the things, when I meet um, with Yvonne on a, on a six-monthly basis with um, our relationship manager at Capita, and it's one of the things he always commends us for being a small authority, is, is the local relationships we have with the banks we do use, and um, to, to get a good, the good rates that we're getting, he is quite impressed compared to his other 
authorities across the county. Could you just repeat <coughs> the Castle Point figure? <coughs> yeah, 0.41%. 41, right, okay. Mm. I heard it as 1.4 or something. That doesn't sound quite right. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good. Um, I actually don't really have any other questions. Has anyone else got any other questions? <coughs> um, further, thank you. One further comment in regards to capital. I remember in previous discussions, didn't we asked if we could investigate with capita as to whether they could do more for us? Yes. Um, and did we get the re response on that? I think it was within the six thousand. I think they say we paid them six thousand pounds. Six thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't think we got the response to that question. I think we might have got a response to a slightly different I think question the, we didn't ask. I think the question was possibly before they came and did a training session. I'm not sure if any of you attended that training session in October where our relationship manager actually came and took a, two sessions here yes. on specifically on treasury management. I didn't attend, I was ill. Right. But I think he was going to address any any questions like that <laughs> during his presentation. Um, I think the question might be relevant to Councillor um, Smith, actually, whether he feels that any advice might be good, because we have the basic service from them for six thousand pounds and it's whether or not additional monies might increase our return although superficially we'll see we get quite a good return anyway compared to other yeah. authorities but they may not have it that might vary between no advice at all yeah or yeah. fund I mean, managers on, on the surface six thousand pounds is is quite 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 a whack of money um and with interest rates being lower the the differential in your return to, to to make it worthwhile has to be considerable. In in years past, with higher interest rates, um, I think we, we over a hundred thousand. Yeah, we'd, we'd had over a hundred thousand back in in pre, in past years. Well, then you can look at much more significant investments in your advice and and so on. But um, I'm probably reasonably comfortable with where we are at the moment. Um, we haven't got pots of money and I, th I think our, our, our risk that we're taking at the moment, I don't think we're being over, over cautious. Um, we're we're be, being sensible and fair, fair, fairly wise. Um, and it's 11.16, which has got the sort of profile of the things that we do. And I think, I think that there's also a danger that you could lose something if you're passing too much over capital as well, because we're actually making the investments ourselves. So actually that's quite a lot of skill and expertise that we're developing in the understanding of money and the handling of money. I mean, that's not my, my absolute expert area. I'm not, I'm not a working professional in it. I'm like, you know, um, <coughs> some of you gentlemen have, have, have been. Um, and. I, I think that 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 upskilling that we're we're getting from that and the the sort of knock-ons is, is is actually very useful to us as an organisation as a council, but it's very difficult to quantify in terms of a value. Can can I just also yes. point you to eleven point two zero, which is something uh, Yvonne wanted me to highlight if this question came up. Um, then <laughs> we obviously this will be after Yvonne's departure, but whoever is the one five one officer will be looking at property funds <coughs> via capita. Um, which I don't know what the outcome will be in terms of yield, but that may well be a, a, an opportunity well it is an opportunity to look look in another area other than our standard banks and building societies and, and, and bonds, etc. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, sorry, sorry Councillor Mason, indicated. I'm glad you picked up with on that point because it was one that I left for later, if you see what I mean. Um, yes, I, I'd like to know more about that because that could be configured, and I'm sure Councillor Seavers you know, will probably know more than I do, um, but property funds could be configured in different ways. Uh, and you know they can be the, the fund itself can, can be configured 
you know, above the property, in the property, as, as, aside the property, in indices, and all sorts of things. They could be onshore, offshore, and all sorts of different flavors. So uh, I don't know what they can offer there. So uh, I would like to ask for them to provide us with uh, a briefing. Sure. I don't think I'm going to like it, <laughs> but I still like a briefing. <laughs> I will, um, I'll ask Yvonne to do that. Okay, um, just sort of finishing off that point, uh, of course property uh, has to be looked at as being a, a very much a longer term investment in most instances. Um, but uh, going back to sort of gaining additional services from capita, um, I think it's uh, important that we sort of note that our balances will actually be um, somewhat lower um, for the time being um, and therefore paying extra monies to get that sort of last fraction of a percent as it would be at the moment um, is, is probably not a, a good bet um, and good investment even. <laughs> um, so I think we did discuss um, the, the, the additional services and that was the view I took at the time. I think that um, we, we would potentially pay a lot for um, not a great no. deal, a lot extra for, for not a great deal more in, in, in what we got back <coughs> for it relative to what seems to me, I think most of us concurred, it was a pretty good deal at £6,000. I don't know how long it will stay at that, mind you. But, um, um, it's a five-year contract which was taken out in January 2014 um, and the only ad is inflation every year. All right, so at the moment that's not going to be That's 6,200 6, this year. Be, yeah. yeah. CPI or RPI? Oh, you've got me now. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. Let's hope it's CPI. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big difference at the moment. Yeah. <coughs> is the difference would you mind if I ask another question? Of course you could is that, is that okay? many questions. Sorry. Um, I, I, I recognise the answer that said that we may be able to borrow internally, which of course is, is a welcome thing because obviously it saves you from paying interest. Is there any way within, the, within our accounting or even our reporting at the very least we can actually you know, reflect a notional, a notional benefit of having done so? Because that, in fact, it enhances our, our return, if you like, and the performance of the management of our funds. And I think that would, that, that would be an appropriate way of expressing how wise that is to do. Um, or we can put, I could add a table into the report to show um, potential costs at different PWLB borrowing rates. Uh, is it, oh, am I missing the Well, question? I guess what I'm saying is, if we were to borrow it, we'd pay interest. Yeah. If we actually borrow internally, I don't know what the cost of funds internally is. There may be a cost of funds. I don't know how we actually you know, structure things. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably have a, a notional you know, internal um, cost. But there will be, but be a kind of a net. Uh, and that's on what you would have paid against what you for, for, for went or paid in terms of the cost of funds internally. But in, but in fact, there would be a benefit. Yeah. And that benefit should be of credit to the management team. Okay. So I'm, I'm suggesting that if we can't show it uh, in a pure accounting way, which I suspect we can't because no. people hate notionals, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but in a reporting sense, I yeah. think it would do well for us to report it. Okay. Uh, when you say credit to the management team, you don't mean bonuses, do you? <laughs> oh, bonuses? Oh, that's a good question. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor Dry, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to add to that, I mean, are there any circumstances where, for instance, we could take a loan out and on the interest, for instance, we would get some sort of tax relief or some other type of relief uh, that would perhaps negate us having to do this internal arrangement? Just a question, I don't know. Not that I know of, but I'll, I'll have a look. I have a feeling that's cheating, or rather not allowed. Yeah. I've got a pretty feeling that's called Damn. arbitrage, and you'd be probably drummed out of every you know, opportunity in the future, as well as probably find yourself, sorry Simon, it's going to be you, mm. uh, <laughs> facing the music somewhere. I have, to, I have to readily admit, even for the tape, 
Uh, the term arbitrage is what not one that fits into my normal vocabulary. <laughs> well, essentially, uh, what it is is you borrow at one rate and you lend it back to a market at a higher rate. You, so effectively it's called arbitrage. You can't do arbitrage. Right. But even taking a tax advantage would be a form of arbitrage. And I think it would probably fall somehow into the wrong category. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> not good. We we're not allowed to borrow to invest, yeah. so yeah. I guess based on those guidelines, no. Mm. Except indirectly by actually investing in an asset which produces a revenue yeah. stream. Yeah. And if we can um, finance those uh, uh, refuse uh, recycling <coughs> vehicles cheaper than the um, current contractors can borrow or future contractors can do so, then well, you know, that actually saves us on, on, on the revenue front, part, which is... Part of the other thinking was a, a, a degree of security because it's it's not unknown that waste contractors go bust mm. and yeah. whatever happens you can't collect the bins if you haven't got a vehicle no. that's right labor can be bought but the vehicles they're more difficult to get off. as we found with the with the crowd, crowd, crowd maintenance at one time i believe yeah they took all the secateurs away <laughs> something like that <laughs> um is that it I don't think I've got any particular uh, questions. I may, may have missed something. The, the first copies I, I printed off for myself to read through were uh, unfortunately uh, just at the end of a, a toner cartridge and mm -hmm. were a little bit uh, faint to say the least. <laughs> I read mine on my iPad. Um, so we move on to the recommendations at 18. Mm -hmm. um, on page 5.8, moving on to page 5.19. Yep. We'll take them separately, I think, just for clarity. Um, so item one, we note the Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy, including the investment, in, in, investment instruments, indicators, limits and delegations contained within the report. Um, note the capital expenditure forecasts, note the MRP policy for 2015-16, note the authorised limit and operational boundary for external debt as laid down in this report. Are we okay on all of those so far? Yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah. The next one is slightly different. Um, identify any issues on this topic for further consideration and discussion by the committee. Well, we did that in Which the we've sense we've that we've asked questions yeah. and the minute will show, show the answers. Exactly. So I'm content with yeah. that. So the minutes will show, show that one. That's good. And we recommend the contents of this report to the full council? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Meeting closed. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah.